Hello everyone, it's your boy Saf, back with more tournament replay analysis. This time it's Sword and Shield and not PDSPOU. Basically, every Sunday, the YouTuber called Freezeye hosts money tournaments that if you purchase a tournament pass, you are able to participate and win the money. Uh, if you don't have the tournament pass, you can still participate and play, but if but even if you win, you just play for fun and you don't get paid. So, we obviously bought the tournament pass, it's like $5 for a whole month of, of money tournaments, so it's pretty cheap and anyone can join. I'm gonna leave the info about those money tournaments in the description if you wanna join too. And they actually host another one this Sunday, so really cool stuff. Shoutouts to Freeze, I obviously for hosting such cool things for competitive Pokemon. His channel is gonna be in my description too. And definitely check it out, he uploads really cool stuff. But yeah, with all that said, let's get into the games. So first game, we're facing this guy, Evi Lar. He's using this kind of like gimmicky Zorar crazy steel type of offense, maybe screens Darkapult, maybe like Swords and Skartana, things like that. I was fishing for fishing, not fishing, but like I was hoping to face uh, bulky offense with toxicity to be able to snipe kill the ground types like a Garzom or whatever they may they might they maybe had, like a Landorus Peteflando. Took it with boom burst and then be able to click full switches and overdrive and all that fun stuff. But we didn't get it, we're facing offense. Now versus offense, I have my tools. Tapu Fin is incredible, Fer Ferrothorn is nice, Spede Flanders for uh, for nothing really, maybe Dance Upon Slow Rogadar or Zorark. Uh, have Scarf for Shift which outspeeds everything and destroys everything except maybe like Scarf Katana. So we have our tools, Car Tornado is really nice, so we have our tools. We're expecting probably lead uh, Dragapult and, and screens. So if he doesn't do that, he might be like a lead guard, some type of deal. So I'm gonna lead with my Urshifu, always. And I have the option to either Ice Punch on Landorus or Jagapult, but Ice Punch is not gonna kill max HP Jagapult, so I will u turn out and play from there. If he doesn't lead with that, he leads with something else, like a Zorak or like a Kartana. I still have many switches, like I have a Tornado Switch can pivot versus both. I have Ferrothorn, I have a lot of tools, just gotta be careful versus Flamethrower and Sludge Bomb on my Fini and all that stuff. So yeah, bigger threats, not sure actually. Not sure, maybe like a Demit card? I, I, I don't know, I wasn't very afraid of this matchup, it was looking fine. Maybe Slowbro, if he's like a nasty player and gets all the all the attacks, yeah, something like that maybe. But I still have like a Spedef Lando. So, let's get into the game. He leads Dragapult, I lead Urshifu, Ice Pan is not gonna kill at all, so I'm gonna U-turn now and switch into my Landorus. He gets a Reflect up, and we'll be able to Stealth Rock immediately, that way, that way we'll be able to tell when Zorark is in. Basically, if you get the rocks up and Zora gets hit, uh, gets hit once, then you can tell by the Stealth Rocks damage which Pokemon is the illusion. So, for example, if Garzom takes like Stealth Rocks damage that Zora normally would take, which is more because Garzom is a ground type, then we'll be able to tell who's who. So, we get the rocks up immediately as he goes for Light Screen and then Curse. Didn't expect a Curse at all, but he goes for that. I get 25 damage, 20, 25%, which is not a big deal. And then I switch it to my tornadoes for two reasons. One of them is because I have regenerator, so this curse damage is nothing. It's not gonna matter at all. And because it doesn't it, it does prevent Kartana from coming in and swords dancing in front of me because I might have heat wave. So this is really nice. I don't remember if I actually have it. I think I do, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe I have maybe I have like default or something like that. I don't remember. But either way, it's good for first Kartana, so it's it's helping a lot with positioning. First those offensive builds. You what you what matters the most I feel is like when, as, at least when you have the tools is positioning, preventing th things from setting up and getting a lot of value versus you. So we go tornadoes here. As we said, we 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 be able to reach and this damage at all, like completely. So it's not gonna matter. As he goes guard I'm gonna switch into my type of Fini for two reasons. One of them is because we prevent the scale shot. And if he had uh, if he had clicked scale shot and didn't switch into type of Fini, he would be able to outspeed my whole ass team. So. My scarf for my scarf ice pants or shifu wouldn't be able to revenge kill this this thread. So by going to Fini, not only we do that, we have Urshifu to be able to kind of like uh, prevent any any setup attempts from Garchomp, but uh, but uh, we also remove twenty. Oh, what was it? Fifty percent. Yeah, dragon type attacks do fifty percent less in uh, Misty Terrain, so this is really nice. And. Yeah, he goes for the SD, he might Earthquake here, I go into my Lando, just stall a few turns, get a little bit of uh, Intimidate, and then I'll switch back into my Tapu Fini to prevent uh, Skeletor. He doesn't click Skeletor, he clicks Aquatel for whatever reason, I don't know, like, like uh, I can see why you have this, but like, maybe in Rain, I don't know, outside of Rain, looks trash, 
Like, I would have, like, Earthquake, Skill Shot, and then, like, maybe Fire Fang for, th for the steals. No, I don't know. Aquatil looks kind of whack. By the way, he has Aquatil. He clicks that. He does nothing to Tapu Fini. He has this again on my Nature's Madness. Because at this point, our goal is to stall the terrain. As well as keep this thing at neutral speed, so he doesn't get he does get defense by Urshifu. So this is really nice. So we stay in. He clicks SD. He clicks Aqua Tail, Aqua Tail over projecting a Moonblast. He doesn't kill because he has a Roselli Berry and Light Screen. But we were, we were able to stall the the screens. And now he goes with the Earthquake. I'll switch. I'll switch. No, I, don't, I won't switch. I'll just get my Urshifu in and I'll click Close Combat because he kills this. And. Slowbro is gonna come out because the rest of the team drops to close combat, which is pretty nice for us. He's gonna go into a Slowbro. He reveals that he's a physical Slowbro with belly jump, so this is extremely scary. But the thing is, Slowbro is trash because it's so fucking inconsistent. Like this shit, although it's scary as fuck, like it, it could literally six on my whole team if you got all the speed boosts, all the quick draws, whatever whatever this this crap is called. It's so inconsistent. Uh, yeah, he doesn't get a single one, he gets Earthquake in the face. So this is really nice for us. No more fighting resists, which means my Urshifu clicks close combat. I'm gonna U-turn now because there's nothing this crap can kill me with. So I'm gonna U-turn, get my Urshifu in, click close combat, get a kill. So this is looking real nice. And then he's gonna get his Zorark in, because he takes 12% from uh, Stealth Rocks. He's gonna click Memento, so it's like, okay, he's going full on, full on setup with Red Steel. Going for like Amnesia, Body Press, Iron Defense, all that stuff. But I didn't know at the time, I didn't know if he had Amnesia too. I was like, okay, he might be Iron Defense, the rest, Sleep Talk, Body Press. So he might just have max per death investment and Toxicity will definitely force him into a 3 KO situation. So he has to rest and all that stuff. So he does have Amnesia and he's gonna click it right now. I do 70, uh, I do 54%, which is like insane damage, I'm max, max special attack specs. So we go for another one. He goes for rest, and now I'm gonna be able to just switch into my Ferrothorn, click the lead sheet, because if he has Amnesia, it means he doesn't have Sleep Dog, as you can see. So, yeah, I get the lead sheet, and all I have to do is revenge kill this thing with Shifu's Surging Strike, because it's a, it's doing critical hits, so it doesn't count the other defense boost that Red still has, it only hits like in the neutral. Uh, defensive stat that Red still has. So, we don't go immediately into Shifu because we don't get destroyed by Body Press. We go Lando, force it to heal, and then force it to rest, and then we go into our Urshifu and win the game. So let me go fast. We go for the Uter, now that we know he's gonna click rest, and then we just click searching strikes and finish the game. So really nice stuff, easy. Let's... We do that, and yeah, this is the first game. It's GG. It's, it's, it's a fine, it's a fine little win for us. So yeah, this is the first round, let's get into the next one. So. We are f we're using a different team. So, oh, obviously, shoutouts to obviously it wasn't always, but for me it's obvious. Shoutouts to Sergio. Shoutouts to my boy Sergio. He provided me with a bunch of sword, uh, sword and shield OU teams. Really good builder. You can you can ask him for help too with builds and everything uh, on Discord by joining the academy. He's a headmaster there, so you can contact him as well as the other uh, headmasters, including me and you know get help for whatever you have like for a game for a replay for a team that you want to build for whatever you want so yeah so also sergio for helping with the teams and yeah this this is not a, in this matchup we are looking hot garbage though how lucha literally six holes my whole team like I, there's not much i can do first of all that will help psychic terrain into how lucha gets him the spedef boost so my air slash my meteor beams i don't know if they kill Nihilo go kills, but like my air slash from this crap doesn't kill, and he can go for swords and basically destroy my whole team. I'm air balloon on the base game, not focus us. I'm 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 screwed by this. So the whole game is literally me trying to not lose to Haulucha, basically. Uh, I didn't do a very good uh, job at it <laughs> because I led with Celestila, tried to get tried to go for an immediate sweep before. My, my thought process was okay. I'll lead Celestila versus the Hattering. He might fear steel type attack. He might just go for the attacks, Misty, 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 Mystical Fire, whatever it's called. But the plan was like, okay, I set up immediately, immediately try to win with this crap before Haulucha sweeps me. That was the, that was the idea behind this uh, Celestila lead. And you'll see how this goes. He leads with Hattering. I lead with Celestila. I click the Meteor Beam. It does decent chunk. 
and he gets a Chuck Room, which means he'll be able to hit first and Mystical Fire me, which does a shit ton of damage, removes my special attack, and Ursula's not gonna heal, so I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. I pay for my own Shifu because I'm expecting Mystical Fire, and I'll be able to stall a little bit of Chuck Room, and then I go back to Celestia because a little bit, it's a little bit useless at this point. And I don't, I don't predict, I don't predict the Thunderbats because again, Celestia is a little bit useless at this point. So we're gonna go into our ladders right here. I think I'm gonna u turn out, right? I, like, I should scour. I think I should scour for Icemans, yeah. I go for U-turn, and I get my Kartana in. I don't remember the, what the set was, like, Swarzans. Yeah. We go for the knockoff on the weakness policy, apparently. Oh, where are we Scarf? I have no idea. Oh, we're Protective Pants, now I remember. So, yeah, he goes for the Dragon Dances. Oh, yeah, this this is not going this is not going incredible. He has the Dual Wing Beat, so he does a shit ton of damage to my Landorus. This probably means he doesn't have Ice Pants, so he's, like, Dual Wing Beat Earthquake. We got a Scarf for the Earthquake with Nihiligo. Back to Lando. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be able to remove his attack boost. You turn out. Mm -hmm. Go back to Nihiligo. I should have went Kartana, I think, right here, but I didn't know if he has Fire Bands or not. And he revealed Outrage, so at that point I was like, okay, I'm going Kartana. I click Knock Off. And yeah, he only does 30% to us. So if he had Fire Bands, we were screwed. But he clicks Outrage for no damage, so you should have just clicked Dual Wing Beat. But yeah, this is really nice for us. We are able to deal with deal with this big ass threat. He goes Tabulele. What do I do? Do I stay in? Yeah, I realize in case he chokes and goes hard, how Lucha? Because I'm basically I'm 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 so screwed. I'm literally so screwed if uh, how Lucha sets up. So I kind of try to go for him choking, and I go for the air, air, aerial ace, which is a little bit uncommon on Cartana. I mean, it's it's a lure for Baswell and all that. But it's not as standard as like Secret Sword, Knock Off, Leaf Blade. So he could have went into Harlucha and I could have immediately sniped it. Didn't happen though. She stays with Double Lele. He misses a Focus Blast, which is really nice for us. And we go for another area Ace. And then he gets the Harlucha in. But this means I'm plus two. I click area Ace. You are not going to set up in front of me. So this is really good because my, my Nihilic is going to be able to leave the attack like a, a, a barely. Like barely. And this thing is strong, man. Meter Beam, Oko, plus one Spedef, death, Haulucha. So this is like, we, we were able to survive. It's not even max spell stack, it's like the speed boosting. Uh, go. We go for the Sludge Wave, we even get a Poison, and then this means Urshifu basically clicks close combat, Blaze can, can click close combat, and we are good to go. We somehow survived the Haulucha sweep, or the Dragonite sweep. I don't know how it worked out for us, but it worked out really well for us. Uh, so yeah, we go for this. He's life rope, obviously, because he's like in the room. So he wants to kind of like deal as much damage. And then we finish the game with our air balloon blaze game. Really cool stuff. Really, really cool stuff. I'm actually, I, I, I was at the time really happy we were able to play around this big asset. And this Nihiligo was a beast. Beast! I think it has a little bit of HP investment because to get like the special, instead of special attack boost, you don't invest max special attack, you invest max speed, a ton of special attack and a little bit of HP, I think, to get the speed boost. By the way, Nihilo was a beast. It was a legend. Let's go into the next game. So, next game, we're dealing with Tala. Tala is a Greek. He's a Greek too, as well, just like me. We have team before. Cool guy. Uh, really good player. One of, the, one of the top Sword and Shield OU players. He has done like incredible news in SPL, World Cup, and honestly whatever he has played in. So yeah, we're facing him, good guy. We're using Rain versus Sand, which is not awful, but he has a Rotom and a Pharaoh, as well as Jack Wolf, a very well-rounded team. We're using a uh, Seismitoad with Power Whip to lure Rotom, but as, you, as, you, as you'll see from the game, it's gonna do like 10%, so the lure didn't quite work for us. But Barascuda is looking incredible. I can uh, click Liquidation versus everything, I can flip there versus everything, I can crunch skill the, this kid, and close combat also looks really, really nice. So, Tapu Koko is completely walled by Excadrill and Pharaoh. And my Tornadus is completely walled by this. Actually, not completely walled. I can U turn out. It's not the end of the world. We're gonna lead with Pelipper, I think, versus the Dragapult. Ah, versus the Rotom. Because I can literally just switch it to my size dude. I don't care about. Uh, I don't care. Oh. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let me, let me, let me go about this again. So we have Pelipper out. I can either block the Volt Switch with my Seismitoad, or I can go Feral, which blocks Status. 
not will always but will always be did a matter very much for size bit though because i'm a special uh i'm a special attacker usually i have power with though so i'm mixed but he doesn't know so he has toxic he doesn't have will always so ferrothon is overall a little bit better because if he vol switches it's not good for size bit though and ferrothon resists if he hydros on the size middle switch we're fine no, we are fine by going Feral, and if he clicks Toxic or Willow is, we're still alright. So we're gonna be able to get a little a little spike or whatever. I remember what I do. I think I get a little spike, right? Yeah, that's a little spike. This is gonna matter a lot for Excadrill, Dragapult, and Tyranitar, as well as Feral, taking a little bit of extra chip. So he goes for that. I'll be able to iron head this thing just to see what we're dealing with. Is it leftover? Is it Rocky Helmet? Is it like a life orb type of set? He goes for the soft boil. I'm gonna get another little spike. And then he clicks Thunder Wave. So I'm losing a lot of frame turns, but I'm able to tell what the Clefable set is. Is he Calm Mind? Is he Rocky Helmet Utility? Is he like a Life Orb Offensive set? I didn't know at the time. And by having Rain, I d take less damage from Flamethrower. So this kind of like gives me information of what we're dealing with, which is really nice. I click Body Press for no reason. Like maybe if he randomly tried to go Feral. Because I was like, okay, he's like a Stealth Ox softball utility set, so he might not have a uh, flamethrower. And he might try to go Feral, try to trade hazards with me. Because I'm spikes on this. I don't know if I have rocks, I don't remember. I might have a high speed hole. So it's going to be more annoying for me to deal with his hazards. So Polybrus kind of like prevents Feral from coming in. That was the goal. And then I go Tapu Koko on the Boom Blast. So yeah, not incredible. I do I do go for Huta versus the Excadil though. We're trying to keep the momentum. I don't care very much about my Coco's HP because it's awful versus Excadil Titar Ferrothorn stuff. So we play with uh we, we we try to keep momentum. He goes Clef, which is good for us because we do we do a shit ton of damage. We take a little bit of Rocky Helmet, we, we do a shit ton of damage, and then I go into my Sajibi Toad and I power whip immediately on the Rorom and I do nothing. 53. Now 53 is nothing. Like, I was thinking, okay, I can trick you, but the, the way me doing 53% kind of like told me, okay, he might not be like fully defensive Rotom, he might have speed, he might have stuff like that. So he'll be able to either click Pain Split or Toxic and be annoying versus my size speed. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna switch into my uh, into my Pelipper because he never clicked full switch versus, versus a, a Toad. And it's one of the few opportunities I can get uh, to I can get my rain up again. So I go in Feral instead of risking size It's a little bit it's a little bit safer. He gets a clef in, he's gonna try to heal it. This is gonna be an opportunity for me to get my size beetle in. And now I took kill Rotom, I outspeed Rotom, so I can click Earth Powers and Hydro Pumps and all that stuff. So I click Weather Ball, I do decent chunk of Feral, but I have to switch out in case he has power whip. I go to my tornadoes, which is good beaver. Um, Osolves, I think, on Tornadoes. He gets a little spike down, which is really annoying for us because, again, it's harder to deal with, with those bitches up. He clicks knockoff. Wait, did I miss a game? There is one more tournament. There's one more replay before this that I played versus a guy jo called Jolly Flag. I'll try to find it after. But uh, anyway, we click. He goes Jackapult on my on my Tornadoes. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why. I think, I think either... <clears throat> I think either staying in with Clef... I think we're switching it to Clef, but Clef gets destroyed by Hurricane, especially if I'm offensive because I showed I showed that I took Stealth Ox damage, so he knows I'm not heavy duty boots, so he might feel I'm offensive, like Specs or some shit like that. Uh, but I'm a Salt Vest, so I go for the knockoff on the Dragapult, which is a good mid ground versus both Leftovers Pharaoh. It's good versus uh, Clef. On the, on the Rocky Helmet because I'll be able to flip turn with my Bar Scuda. It's good versus uh, Rotom getting rid of left of it. It's good versus Dragapult. Hurricane was also free because if he goes Titar, I'll be able to U-turn out after and we get, take, we get uh, Spike damage. But uh, I mean, getting rid of Tyranitar's item is also really nice, especially if you like a Spedef left of it set. So we get uh, this knockoff on versus Dragapult. I easily leave any attack because I'm Spedef. And I go for another knockoff. Maybe Hurricane was better because I took a clef. Not sure. I go for knockoff. I get rid of its item. It's not bad for us. But I make contact. 
So yeah, Hurricane was a little bit better, but I did not get my Ferrothorn back in versus this thing. No more rain for me, so Hurricane wasn't the play for me in case he had the wave. Because I don't kill it in one, so... It's not bad for us. I'm able to get another Spike or Click Island here, the Vorsi to heal, which is gonna allow either Pelipper or Tapu Koko to come in here. Yeah. Tapu Koko is the most expendable member of my team, so I go into it. And what do I do? I, I do go for Roost on his Moonblast, and then I go for the Thunder and destroy this thing. I not only hit, but I even paralyze, and this does a shit ton of damage. Even if I did, he didn't Roost. He didn't soft boil, he went for Moonblast. So yeah, this is good for us. Now I Roost. I don't know if I should have roosted or you now to keep the momentum because we already said Tapu Koko is not like the most useful Pokemon on my team because it's walled by Pharaoh and this. But if he clicked U turn, if I click U turn and he went Pharaoh, that wasn't very good for us. So maybe it is fine. And I'm gonna U turn now. We still do 11% and get my Pharaoh versus the Rapid Spin. So we do a little bit of chip damage on the on the Excadil. It's not bad for us, but he has leftovers, so it's a little bit annoying. And then I switch into my Pelipper on the Earthquake, because Rock Slide or Iron Head didn't kill, and I showed already Body Press. So he's kind of pressured to click that. To click that Earthquake. Excuse me, that was my chair. I'm gonna be able to switch out into my... Oh, I didn't switch. Huh. That was a little bit of a risk. I see leftovers, so maybe not Rock Slide, but that was a little bit of a risk, I think. Rapid Speed Earthquake, I, I don't... I know he had probably SD, right? Yeah, that's why I didn't care very much about a rock slide thing. But we get the default, which is insanely good for us. Really nice. And I'm switching into Pharaoh versus the Clef. Mm -hmm. We go back to Pelipper. But if he clicked Moonblast here, it was bad, but he clicked Stealth Rocks. So I get the default, he gets paralyzed, and now Scold kills easily. He doesn't switch, he sacks the Clef, and now we made a lot of progress. Not only we have the rain up, which means he's kind of forced to go into his T-Tar, but we kill the Clef too, and we still have the Pharaoh as a sack. So he's gonna go into his T-Tar, we do a little bit of crunch, uh, recoil, not recoil, iron barbs damage. He reveals that he's not Spedef leftovers, or maybe choice band, maybe whatever. I click close combat, he dies to Sand, I think. Oh no, he has lefties. Oh yeah, Sand goes before lefties. Yeah, I have played this game before. But uh, now the game is simple. Now. I have to get Parascuda in and click correct clicks. Am I, it, it was like that before, before anyway, like it was the same thing before, but uh, now with Dragapult being so low, I can click flip turn and I kill it. So if I click close combat, I kill something else. If I click flip turn, I take damage from Pharaoh, but I can kill Dragapult. So it's honestly 50, 50 not 50, 50, but it's like who gets the plays right. And I click close combat versus the Ferrorum, which is very big for us. I'm choice ban, obviously, choice ban Adamant. So I did 72% on the Rorum and I killed it. And then he goes Dragapult. I have a very so safe switch into my Tornadoes. So you can see how me clicking close combat is a little bit better than clicking Flitter and again and again and take damage from Pharaoh. Because Dragapult is not an issue for my Assault versus Tornadoes, especially after we got rid of Rocks. So yeah, I go into this, he goes for the SD, I get rid of its item, so I, so I can be a little bit annoying. There was no one move X that could have killed me with, and I suck my... I, I actually, I don't suck. I go I go Seismic Toad. Now, in this situation, you never want to suck Pelipper. The goal here is to try and win the Weather Wars. So, we basically try to win the Weather Wars. Uh, weather Wars and get Parascuda into Revenge Kill Exadel with safety. But I have to keep the Pelipper alive. If I suck the Pelipper and then get Parascuda in, I then lose the Weather War because it's gonna suck Dragapult and then Exadel is gonna outspeed my whole team. So the goal is never suck Pelipper, suck something else that is not as useful, so either Size Toad or Tapu Koko, and and Revenge Kill it with Parascuda while still having Pelipper alive. That is the goal, that's how we win the game. Because Parascuda is a wing on in rain though. So there's no more sand, which means we can sit with we can sack Pelip we can sack Tapu Koko with safety. Because if he if he clicked rapid spin versus my size toad, he wouldn't be able to get another he would be able to get the, another boost. So he would eventually outspeed my Parascuda, but he wouldn't be able to kill my size toad. So he kind of had to click Earthquake unless he really wanted to predict there. So we suck Tapu Koko with the Expendable member, we go Belly Pair, and now even if he clicks Rapid Spin, I I still outspeed with Parascuda. So, I'm able to click uh, Flip Turn right here, and this means I can click Close Combat and destroy everything. So, I think your play was to suck Ferrothorn right there instead of Jagapult. 
this was a little bit of a risk by him because now I definitely sweep with close combat and I still have my Pelipper. So you have to win the Weather War. And to do that, you... Wait, what, what do I do? Okay, yeah. Now I sack Pelipper. Mm -hmm. I go Barascura. I close combat, get a kill on Pharaoh. On Exhatil, apparently, not Pharaoh. Not sure. Because his Exhatil doesn't break my... Let me, let me check again. So I go for Guten. I sack Pelipper. Yeah, I get the rain up, which means I get the Parascuda in. I click close combat. Exadil is at 35, which means my Assault vs Tornadoes always leaves any attack, and I can click Hurricanes versus this. So yeah, maybe... I think his play was to sack Fero, and then go Exadil. No, go back to Titar. Nah, there's nothing you can do, because... I still outsped everything. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't let Exadil to set up so yeah he's the way he he lost is by sacking jackabolt i think the previous turn on my flip turn he had to click pharaoh so yeah that was the turn i think that definitely sealed the game for me and yeah costed him the win right i think that's how it goes i think that's how it goes let me let me find the replay real quick because there was another game versus uh there's a guy called Tommy, Tony, Jolly Flygon, Jolly, jo Jolly something like that. I don't see it though. I don't see it. Maybe that game is like completely out of existence. That's sad. It was a nice game. Anyway, let's get into the next game. All right. So we we are in the semifinals right now. We're dealing with Bujnisha Buz Fror. I've never seen this guy before, but uh, his team looks threatening. He has Nihiligo, he has a uh, Tapufini, he has Magneson, so it's, it kind of yells like, I'm trapping Ferrothor, and then my Kalmai, Tapufini, and my Nihiligo are going, going to town. And then he has his defensive type of utility type, of course, with Lando, Torn, Melmetal. So he has those for a lot of stuff. My team is using defensive Boswell, which is completely useless in this team, except maybe versus his Melmetal. Uh, I'm using Tapu uh, I'm using Victini, but he has an Hilgo that outspeeds me. Uh, but for the rest of the stuff, I have moves to hit them with, which is really nice. I have Glacier for Spedeflando. I have Bolt Peak, Bolt, Bolt, Bolt Psych, whatever it's called, for uh, uh, Tapu Fini, and then Vigrade is also quite nice. But yeah, Nihiligo is not good for uh, is is annoying for our Tapu Fini, for our uh, Victini, excuse me. And then I have a Nido King that is also extremely useless because he has a Torn, he has a Nihiligo, he has an Assolves, uh, Melmetal more likely, or at least a Spedef fish kind of like uh, Melmetal. So I have I basically have to get so many plays correct with Nido King and Victini to get, to make progress. I have a uh, Spedef, I think, Rorom, which is going to allow me to eat attacks from Nihiligo, Rorom, eh, eh, Rorom, Tornadus, Tabufini, and, and even help versus Flask and Magnus on as well as Landorus because I'm ground immune only to my Levitate. And I don't remember, is it Heavy Duty Boots? Is it Heavy Duty Boots torn in this team? I have to. Let me check. Let me check. It is. Okay, it is Assault Vest again. Assault Vest, Icy Wing. Alright, so let's get into the game. So, we gotta lead... Let me... Let me let me see what we're gonna lead. He leads with Thorn, I lead with Melmetal. And... Oh yeah, another bad thing is... This team has... Uh, Magneson with Rocky Helper and... And Pack the Tries. So my... Double Iron Bass, Earthquake, Melmetal... Could easily get completely walled by this. So I gotta be very careful with my Mel Metal, how I play with it, and what, what moves I decide to do. But I do the correct moves, at least at the beginning. I get a little toxic versus these tornadoes, and then I click Earthquake, I think, hoping to catch Magnezone. But he goes up Fini. Yeah, this, this is not awful. We do a little bit of damage. We're able to tell he has he has defensive investment, but uh, maybe not max. I click Toxic, expecting maybe Landorus uh, as a mid count, but he goes Mel Metal as a mid count. Because it's good versus both, uh, versus uh, my switch on top of any, which would be like maybe tornadoes. Not sure, not sure. But it's it's not bad for stable on a bus, and it's not as risky as Magnus on against my earthquake because Mel Metal easily leaves an earthquake. So we we'll go bus will always on the Mel Metal. He goes for earthquake. I'm gonna click close combat, I think, or ice punch right here. As he reveals, he's not AV. He goes for protect, so he might be. He might be like Tapu Fini and still have Toxic on Melmetal, which is not incredible. 
when it comes to like Team Synergy, but either way, uh, I click Ice Fans on the Landorus, and I don't play, I don't try to predict, I just click another one, I think. No, I do try to predict, like, stupid. Uh, I'm stupid, why did I do that? I guess Ice Fans didn't 2KO, so I would have to go for another, but it wasn't even that bad. Damn it. I get my Rotom Toxic, which is awful, but I can click Hydro Pumps and Volt Switch still. I do click uh, the Buzzwall Switch. Maybe on the U turn or something. Not sure. I don't like my plays here. If I'm being honest, like I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna act like I, I know exactly what happened, like what was, what was going on during these turns. I didn't love this place the way I see it now. This is this why it's good to kind of like analyze the games after because you're able to say like, okay, I didn't like this turn very much. I like this turn. I didn't like this turn, but I like that turn. So this, this how you kind of like collect and select like the plays that you liked and try to implement them in your games next next time and don't do like the trash plays that you maybe could have could have done different different stuff those turns so yeah we go tornadoes as he misses on his turn we're gonna trade knockoffs with our thorns i think this is better for me i think this is better for me Maybe my Assault Vest would have been nice versus his Tapu Fini, but, but me getting rid of his Heavy Duty Boots or Assault Vest is good for my Nido King. I thought anyway. So, we go for another knockoff, as it's a speed eye. Now, the reason I went for this is because he, he went first, and I'm not max speed, so I was like, okay, he might be max speed Tornado, so I'm gonna knock off something that is gonna come in after. So it would either be Land or Usmel Metal, Magnezone, or Nihiligo. But uh, we are actually both 352 speed, which is interesting. Uh, he goes Magnus on right here. I'm gonna switch into my Nidor King as he predicts me with a flash gun on really good play. The really trash play by me, if I'm being honest. Maybe Pharaoh. Th this is not Pharaoh. Maybe Melmetal. Mm, not Melmetal. Maybe Victini or Rotom was a little bit better instead of going hard Nidor King. But uh, I make a good play after and I ice beam the tornado switch. So this is where the knockoff. Uh, was really good for us because there is a magnet on my screen so I never click earthquake and <laughs> predict the switch so this worked out really well for us after knocking off its assault vest he goes into his Nihilago he kills me with meter beam easily and then I have to revenge kill it with my Mel metal I think right? right yeah he has to switch out I earthquake because I'm afraid of magnezone more than Landros because magnezone can literally trap me so I go buzz wall on this kid, he's gonna click U turn. We take uh, we do a little bit of damage with Rocky Helmet and this invites Kalma and Tapu Fini again. So this is a big problem. Tapu Fini and Nihiligo are still the biggest problems. Now he not, he doesn't have meter beam anymore, which means a few things. It means my Rotom leaves, it means my buzz wall at this range he leaves an attack from uh, Nihiligo, it can go for a strong close combat after, which is gonna put in range of my tornadoes, and it means my Victini also leaves a uh, uh, not meter beam, but a uh, power gem. So this is all important information. We're gonna switch into my Mel Metal on the Scald, which does a good chunk because I'm not like I don't have left rest to recover this, and I'm not a solver or something like, something like that. And I still click Earthquake because I don't want to get trapped by Magnezone. That's the main goal. I switch parts wall always. There's no reason to play around with Earthquakes and all that. And I click Close Combat on his Protect. He takes a little bit. He he heals a little bit and then goes into his Tapu Fini. Now, I do have Toxic, but uh, Toxic is not good versus Tapufini. Toxic was good versus Landorus, which I was maybe hoping for, but I don't know. Maybe a different player right here was better, like tor Tornadoes. Tornadoes right here was a little bit better, I feel. Yeah, because I would be able to knock off the leftovers on Lando or just switch against it into my Rotom so I don't get Toxic. And I would also be able to get a good position in versus Tapufini because I leave any attack from Tapufini with my tornadoes, even if I lost my assault vest, so I can knock off its leftovers. So yeah, instead of toxic right here, I think now I would go tornadoes. But yeah, either way, we're gonna switch into our Rotom, our toxic Rotom. He goes for the Calmite. We're extremely scared of this shit. I'm gonna Volt Switch immediately. I'm not gonna predict Landos. I'm not gonna predict anyone. He goes for the Draining Kiss. We heal a little bit and then go into our Melt Metal to threaten this thing out. Now. I'm, I'm still very afraid of Magnezone, and he decides to stay in. Not sure. Double Iron Bash would have definitely destroyed your Tapu Fini. And I think Tapu Fini was a little bit of a wing on. At the same time, maybe Nihiligo was the wing on, so you try to weaken Melmetal for Nihiligo and sweep with R. I see. 
I see. Yeah. So the reason he stayed in, I, I earthquake because I was thinking, okay, he, this is the turn that he's gonna try to trap it with Magnuson and then go for the type of finish sweep. So I'm gonna go for the mid ground earthquake, and if it doesn't work out, I'm gonna vault switch and then still try to beat it, beat it with like vault switch into bolt, bolt, bolt strike. But I didn't want to get my Mel Metal trap right here versus Magnuson, which, as we said, is Rocky Helmet. So I'm gonna take a shit ton of damage from doing from going for double iron bus against his rocky helmet and then he's gonna be able to chuck me with magnet rise so i go for the earthquake i do a decent chunk versus this thing he's gonna be able to trick KO me easily as i go tornadoes on the next skull to get rid of its knockoff to get rid of its item as he unfortunately burns me immediately but this means we'll be able to trade tornadoes right here to put in range of my bolt strike so yeah, this is not awful, but it's not incredible. I go Victini, I predict the Landorus, if he switches out into Magnezone. Now, this was a little bit risky. Obviously, there is a Calmine type of thing in front of me, boosted. So Skull would have destroyed my Victini. And I wasn't very sure how much he still wanted the type of thing alive. I wasn't sure. So this was a little, uh, uh, kind of like very big risk for me to click Glacier, glacier right here. But I, I was... I was in the back, so I want to play a little bit aggressively, try to get momentum, try to catch the Landorus, try to catch a switch into Magnuson or Nihiligo, slow them down and then click something after. So we go for the Glaciate, V-Grade is completely free right now, even if he goes Nihiligo, even if he switches out, and we get to kill the Magnuson, as you can see, Rocky Helmet, so I was correct, it was the set that I was talking about, and then he goes Nihiligo, I have to suck Mel Metal, which is the most expendable Pokemon on my team. And the plan is go Rorum right here. Or Boswell, apparently. Oh yeah, Boswell is a little bit less useful than Rotom. Even if my Rotom is poisoned, but Rotom has good matchup for both Tapofini, Landorus, and Melmetal. So, because I can use it now for Melmetal and break my tap my Victini. So, I go Boswell, I leave Power Gym easily. So, he's switching out, and I click uh, Roost. Uh, close combat was better. Uh, yeah, close combat was a little bit better. I don't remember how much power team did. I think it did. I did. I think it did two KO. So if I lose it, I was outside of range from two KO. But maybe close combat sack pass was a little bit better. At the same time, I want to keep as many Pokemon as I can. So I, I, I maybe lose is fine. Yeah, lose is fine. And I don't. I don't understand these turns. I don't understand these turns. I don't understand these turns. Like I definitely beat him. So I went Rorom. As a mid ground versus both Tapofini and Lando, if that's the game plan. I guess it's also good for Toxic. No, I, I, right now, the way I see it, I would go I would go for close combat even if he sweets. Or even Ice Pants. Even if even Ice Pants first, like hoping uh, hoping to face Lando. But anyway, you go back to Boswell. He clicks double iron on Bass. He takes a shit ton of damage, which means he's gonna be in range of my crap. And then I'm gonna be able to close combat the Mel Metal. No reason to lose as he's gonna be clicking double our bash again and again. Uh, actually there was a reason to lose. Because if I if I roosted, he still did like how much? 23 and 23. So he still put me in half HP. But uh, he would faint in the first double arm bash. So I would be around 70 75 percent of my HP, which means the Hilago would be able to kill me. Yeah. Yeah, the play was roost again and again. The play was roost again and again, even if I allow Tapofini, because I would be able to switch it to my Rotom after. Mm, I didn't play the, the late game perfectly. Yeah, but I go Victini. I go Victini, I click uh, Bolt Strike. As we said, we leave the power team at uh, 8%. And then he, all he has to do is go Landorus, intimidate me, and I have to pray I get a crit versus Tapofini. So I glitched the thing, I'm minus one attack. And we pray for a critical that we don't get. That we don't get it. So he lives at 5%. So this was my run for Freeze Eyes uh, money tournament this week in Sword and Seal. We did all right. We, we, we won a bunch of games. Like we didn't, I did better than I expected because I haven't played seriously Sword and Shield in a while. I only kind of like focused on this one in Sword and Shield. But like we did all right. We could have won. This was the game for semi-finals, so we only need like this win and one more to to get the money. But uh, I misplayed a little bit here. I feel.
Like Ather was definitely better place to do. Like for example, roosting with type of with Boswell was better. Unless he had Toxic Element Metal, which might have been the case because he's protect. So protect earthquake, double and bash and toxic. Hmm. But if he was Thunderwave, it's not that bad. And I would be I would still be outside of range from Nihiligo. Let me my music. Alright. Uh, but I would still be outside of range from Nihiligo. So there were a few turns that I would have done different now that I see the replays. But either way, this is this is why we're doing this tournament replay analysis. Because I'm able to see like, okay, I had these good turns, I had these bad turns. What do I do next time? I try to do the, the turns that got me positive outcome. So it's really important if you're trying to improve as a player, which I do, uh, to study your replays, check them, discuss what plays you had, uh, and what options you had and what you could have done differently. And yeah, next games, next tournaments, try to do better. But yeah, this was my run for Freeze Eyes tournament. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but they're gonna be hosting uh, more of these every Sunday. So again, the link is gonna be in the description if you wanna join these tournaments every Sunday around. Actually, I'm not gonna say time. I have no clue what the times are. I was about to say the times, but I have no clue what the times are. I'm not gonna act like I know. <laughs> but yeah, this was my run. I, I, I had a lot of fun playing Sword and Shield. It's been a while since I had so much fun playing Sword and Shield, so yeah, I enjoyed this this tournament a lot. But yeah, please consider please consider dropping a little subscribe as well and maybe sharing the video with or my videos in general versus and my channel in general versus more not versus but with more people because it helps my my little channel grow. It's like completely free subscribing. You can move it whenever you want. If not, that's fine. I still appreciate you watching the videos and supporting me in general but yeah this is my this is my run on the tournament if you need any help if you if you want to discuss like my my games or anything in the in the comments let me know and i'll make sure to respond maybe take the criticism or not <laughs> but yeah thank you all for watching hope you are you have all a fantastic day and yeah bye bye everyone peace